can play a piss. Hi, this is Tom from Millennium Blackjack. Welcome back. This is part three of a short history of uh, Blackjack. And uh, part two, we last uh, spoke about uh, Ken Houston. Ken Houston is the most popular Blackjack uh, count counter in the world. He was very popular because since he started uh, making money playing uh, blackjack in Las Vegas, he then left his job as the vice president of the Asian Pacific Exchange to play blackjack full time. And he was very flamboyant and also appeared in many TV shows. Uh, and that's why uh, most people uh, get to know about him and the exploits of uh, blackjack using basic strategy and uh, card counting and therefore blackjack just uh, became more and more popular with players and uh, became the most popular uh, game in casinos however despite people going in the casinos uh, most of the people were actually losing money and therefore uh, his exploits uh, uh, were not uh, were to an extent an advantage to the casinos that uh, blackjack became very popular and casinos had more players coming in with uh, lots of confidence that they're going to make money however it was not uh, the case so his main uh, way of playing the start when he started in Las Vegas, he was part of a, a team where the team, they will pull the resources together to have a huge bankroll. And then they will have a spotters who will spot uh, games or sit down and play a minimum bet when the deck is favorable, signal the so-called uh, big player who's got a uh, big money to come and play. The reason for this is that now at this stage casinos uh, in most of the casinos wouldn't allow you mid entry. In other words, if somebody was uh, not in the game and then when he came in, uh, they might uh, refuse. That's the first part. The second part is that a certain casinos will allow a certain betting spread like i said in the last uh, part two some casino might tolerate one to four uh, uh, betting spread and you go beyond that the dealer will shuffle the cards or, or something like that or you might have uh, uh, been threatened uh, that uh, we don't want your services you, you can't uh, have a betting spread more than say one to f more than one to four and so on or sometimes you might be bad for that reason the big player will then come in uh, with a huge bet and this is not unusual in las vegas uh, that some of the players may just come in just maybe a very rich so they might come with big bets and as long as the player was playing big bet, not having raised the bet from the beginning, just jumped in and saying some ridiculous thing, ah, I feel lucky tonight or something like that. So the dealer and the uh, boss, they wouldn't be worried about such players. Often uh, those players big, uh, bring uh, huge money for the casino, they either drunk or very rich without any knowledge of uh, blackjack uh, at all. So that's how mainly he was playing, but 
the teams will uh, break up, uh, reform and so on, play a lone wolf uh, type of blackjack and so on. So those are quite uh, varied. So he also played uh, in Atlantic City and uh, that's where the big major thing happened. Because when he was playing in Atlantic City, the casino did uh, burn him. That's when he took the casino to court. And the argument was that uh, uh, casino allow drunk people to play or somebody who doesn't know anything about the game. They were happy to have that uh, person play and take their money. However, if somebody is using his brain to play the casino uncomfortable, they will even ban them. For that reason, the court ruled uh, that uh, casino casinos can't ban uh, card counters. That was in Atlantic City in 1979. And after which uh, the casinos uh, had a three-week period which they said they allowed uh, um, blackjack counters to play. And during that period they were documenting to see how much money the so-called card counters are making and how much is affecting their bottom line. And after the three-week period, they were convinced that the card counters indeed are winning much more money than they bring in. For that reason, the casinos hired their own mathematicians to determine what can they do. Can they still continue offering this game? Or should they ditch uh, this uh, blackjack game completely as it may not be profitable if uh, card counters cannot be bad as the court has ruled. So the mathematicians did uh, indicate to them that they can indeed uh, make uh, significant changes that will uh, make card counting um, not effective or very less effective. That was the introduction of uh, multiple decks which in Atlantic City was uh, seven and eight decks, so eight decks uh, uh, commonly being used. And uh, only uh, 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 five decks, five and a half will be played, the remainder won't be played. Because card counting, like we said in part one, is very effective as the cards or the deck becomes fewer. So as the cards become fewer, the card counting becomes even more effective. So two and a half decks won't be played in this eight deck uh, game, or maybe even three in some, uh, because uh, the casino might vary in how much uh, the decks are being cut away. And the next thing was to introduce a um, uh, new shuffle technique. You know, in the past, the cards will be shuffled as a straight uh, shuffle, uh, but this time they introduce where the cards will have uh, three stacks, uh, equal stacks, and they shuffle each stack to form a new fourth stack. And each time they will shuffle and do stripping, so it's called uh, shuffle and uh, stripping. And this uh, has the tendency to put the high cards together and the low cards together, call it card clamping. And the reason for it is that when card counting was introduced by Professor Edward Thorpe, the premise is that the cards are coming randomly or very close to random. For that reason, when uh, low cards have come out, you're expecting that high cards will be coming out. But if cards are clamped, what will happen is that while you are expecting uh, high cards to come out because then you have a, a huge bet being shoveled in and maybe you get a double, maybe a split and a double and even shove, you sh uh, shove uh, more money out, you find that the small cards just continue to come out. And we said earlier small cards uh, favor the house and therefore you lose 
And this is uh, what uh, Ken Houston actually uh, f uh, first one to describe cut clumpy by uh, describing so-called early shuffle in, in uh, Caesar's Palace in Las Vegas where the, the, the new cards introduced he could uh, describe where you could see the small cards in huge uh, uh, numbers and then you shove your high uh, bed the small cards continue to come when the big cards come you get a 20, if maybe you even have two hands, knowing now you can have favorable hands, you get two hands, each is 20 and the dealer gets a 10, and when it turn over, it's got 20 and it's a standoff for a push, and the count has come down. And he, he actually called a Nevada gambling board to come and observe because he found this one with his experience of playing blackjack so many years before and what you could see in this shuffle in Caesars, uh, what you call uh, Caesars early shuffle it was something he just couldn't believe with his experience of playing blackjack for so long and he lost 15,000 US dollars within one hour for that reason why he called but the Nevada gambling board uh, person did come out but he looked he said uh, the casino uh, is shuffling uh, but uh, there's nothing uh, uh, that is illegal what they're doing the cards might be looking funny on the table but there's nothing uh, illegal about it so that's how uh, <laughs> He just left it uh, that that you have to live with it, come with a new strategy or something else, because this uh, was really uh, giving him a bad time. And then uh, Ken Houston died in 1989 in France, uh, where the game uh, started, uh, which is uh, something uh, maybe a coincidence or something uh, like that. So that's uh, Ken Houston. So in uh, part four, we'll talk about uh, game control in uh, blackjack that uh, the casinos employ since changes were made in uh, 1979 in Atlantic City casinos, which other casinos all over the world did uh, follow through. And those changes have been going on since 1979 up to now and the changes over the years now the K game is completely different from the one that was played in the 60s and the early 70s before changes were made in 1979 till next time cheers That's the stratosphere, which is the tallest building in North America. So when it was built, uh, six people fell from the where they were building and died. And it's got a restaurant called Top of the World. And they also a, a sky jump uh, down. Uh, it's quite amazing. That's this stratosphere which is the
casino that is in between the strip, which is now where the big casinos are, and downtown, where the small casinos are, where it all started in 1909 with the Golden Gate, was the first casino in Las Vegas, in downtown. And the first uh, casino in the main strip is the Flamingo.